Hey, it's Pastor Mike. Before we get started with today's episode, I want to encourage you to check out our other Time of Grace podcasts, like this one, The Non-Microwave Truth by C.L. Whiteside. C.L. just has an amazing way to bring fresh perspective to some of my favorite passages from the Bible. You can search for The Non-Microwave Truth wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And now on to today's episode. Have you ever heard of the movie The Sixth Sense? It was released in 1999, the year that I graduated from high school. So some of you are way too young to know this movie reference. But it was a classic film with Bruce Willis. And while I won't spoil it for you, I will tell you this, that you really don't know what the whole movie is about until you get to the end. The Bible's a book that's kind of like that. This week, as I've tried to open your eyes to how beautiful and beneficial this book is, I could tell you about all the little parts and divisions so you could grasp all its different pieces. Or I could just go to the end and tell you what the whole book is about. So, which do you prefer? Do you want the little puzzle pieces or do you want to see the box top? (laughs) Well, today, how about I give you both? The Bible is this one book that has changed the world. Every single year, a hundred million copies of this book are sold. But this one book, the Bible, is actually divided into two parts that people call the two testaments, the Old Testament and the New Testament. You might think of these pages, the Old Testament, as the BC, the before Jesus part, and the books of the New Testament, these pages, as the AD, in the year of our Lord part. And yet, if you want to get even more specific, you could say that the Old Testament was broken into 39 separate books. We call them the books of the Bible, but you might think of them as mini books within this bigger book. The New Testament has books too, 27 different ones that make up the years from about 40 to 100 AD, just after the time of Jesus. The books of the Old Testament were originally written in Hebrew and Aramaic by famous authors like the prophet Moses or King David, King Solomon, or the prophet Isaiah. The books of the New Testament were written by the eyewitnesses mostly of Jesus' life. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Apostle Paul, Peter, his brothers James and Jude. And yet, if you want to get even more detailed, these 66 books of the Old and New Testament are divided into chapters and verses. It's important for you to know that those weren't originally in the Bible when it was written. They were added many, many years later so that people could find their way through this long and sometimes complicated book. If you're a Bible nerd, uh, there are 1,189 separate chapters and there are 31,173 separate verses. (laughs) So at the minute level, you could say that there are over 31,000 little puzzle pieces that all fit together to make up the chapters and then the books and then the Testament and then the entire Bible. You got all that? (laughs) Okay, that's a little bit too complicated. Let me get way to the end of this incredible book. Let me read you just one single verse of those 31,000 plus so that just like the movie The Sixth Sense, you can grasp what this book is all about. The very last chapter, Revelation 22, verse 4, says this, They, the people of God, will see his face. What is this massive, life-changing book about? It's about people like you and like me seeing the face of God. It's about nothing, no decision we've ever made, no mistake we've ever chosen, no addiction we've ever battled with, no embarrassing part of our life, nothing in the past, present, or future, nothing gets in the way of us being with God face to face. In the Bible's last chapter, there is satisfaction, there is joy, there is rest, there is peace, there is contentment, there is this life that you and I are craving to find and how do we find it? According to the Bible, by seeing the face of God. So as you jump into this book, As you try to understand all those little verses and the bigger chapters, the larger books, the testaments, and and cover to cover this book, I want you to think about that. This is a book about being with God. This is a book that focuses on what Jesus did so that people like us could be with God. So let me leave you with one last story today. About 500 years ago, there was a man who made his own translation of the Bible into his native language. His name was Martin Luther. And he sparked a revolution of sorts a reformation within the church. And there's this kind of classic painting of Martin Luther by a contemporary artist of his day named Lucas Cranach. And Cranach depicted Pastor Luther up in his high pulpit preaching to these people. And down on the other side of the painting are all these people, poor people, rich people, university professors, 
uh, common farmers. And in between the crowd and Pastor Luther is this floating image of Jesus on a cross. Now, Chronic was trying to depict that when Luther preached, he talked about Jesus, the only one who could forgive our sins to get us to God. But here's my favorite part of the painting. Up in Martin Luther's pulpit, the place where he spoke and preached, there was an open Bible. And he had his finger in it, pointing to this specific verse on this specific page that would talk about Jesus. But in Chronic's painting, guess what page that is? We don't know. He chose to leave it blank. So that whenever Martin Luther preached on this book or on that one, uh, on this chapter or on this one, he would always tell people about the Jesus who died for sins so that people like us could see the face of God. I'll admit the Bible is a pretty complicated book, but let me jump to the ending so I can keep it simple. There is a Savior, a Jesus, who gave up everything so that you could find everything in the presence of God. Let's pray. Uh, Dear God, what an amazing book. We would be so happy, so completely satisfied. All of our fears would disappear if we could just get a clear view of your glorious face. I pray that you would use this book today and throughout this week to help us do just that. We can't see you, but we can read the things that you wrote. So let them give us joy and clarity and peace that we can rejoice that one day when we take our last breath, our faith will disappear and we will see you face to face. We long for that day. Give us faith to hold on until it comes. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.